It's a bit dark in here now. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Viviana Kekia, and I'm public engagement curator here at the CCA. And for tonight, we are hosting an event, part of a long-term program called Intentions in Action. Uh, the scope of this program was actually to try to present different approaches, practices, methodologies that would be described as socially engaged practices. Um, and the idea was also to collect all these different examples from all over the world. And it was quite interesting to see how simple sometimes was to have examples that would come from the States or from continental Europe or so-called continental Europe. And there were other areas that were a bit more gray. Uh, in which it was quite difficult to localize practitioners or to even get to know that there were practitioners operating there. But they are. They are there. They are working. It's just a question of visibility sometimes, how the system works in such a way that some names are more visible than others and some practice then circulate more in the so-called mainstream in a way that um, a bubble for socially engaged practitioners is really impacting on their practice and their further professional development. Sometimes there are very few possibilities for those geographies that are not in, in the center, let's say, of the map. Um, and therefore, for me, it was also interesting to understand how those practitioners could get involved in the program. So for actually, I would like also to acknowledge that the talk tonight uh, was envisioned and then planned and created originally by one of our interns uh, called Nina Mikuskova. Uh, if she's online following us, hi. <laughs> uh, she stayed with us for quite a long time. She was from Slovakia. And she had been a student of Andrea. And she suggested her name. And when she suggested her name, my first reaction was Naples. And it was really strange because the connection was with an exhibition where Andrea's work called Distributive Justice mm -hmm. was presented in a contemporary art a museum called Madre. So all of a sudden, I connected the two points through the suggestion of Nina. Uh, and then I started to work on the event. And logistically and practi practically, the event then was created by me and Chai In, our current intern. Um, and she took care of the majority of the logistic. And then we tried to structure conceptually. We had a Skype call. And we analyzed all the things that Andrea could actually bring in. One of the most interesting part for me is that Andrea is not just an art practitioner, she is also a pedagogue, like she's a teacher, she's involved in academia. So she knows very well how to communicate certain messages and using the glossary because she has this constant practice of having to deliver this to her students. So I thought that this was also another entry point, quite interesting for us to receive it in, in Glasgow. Uh, I will use some of Andrea's word. Andrea tonight will discuss her artistic production, which operates on the liminal areas of the society, and she will suggest the capability of art to offer grounds for the rethinking of certain social partners and creating new ones. Art is understood as research, by which research results are no longer primary, but are rather one of the integral components, the background on which artistic production unfolds. And it's also for me relevant to say that even in this case, even with no promise of future collaboration with the CCA, Andrea asked for a longer period of engagement with the site. So she's staying with us for a week. Because also for her coherence, like for her personal commitment to her own practice, in her opinion, it's important for an artist to come and to have a sort of understanding of the context. Uh, this doesn't mean that she's going to study Glasgow and then come out with a brilliant proposal in a week time. I'm not trying to say that. But at least to have a bit of an understanding just for her own knowledge. Um, but still, what I repeated during this week is that our doors are open and we will see how this can develop further. Um, and I wanted to stress this, how important is research in socially engaged art practice and how research can be unfolded in different ways. We can have participatory action research, including members of the public. Uh, we can have a research that is more a sort of anthropological or ethnographic research, uh, where the artists function more as an observer. Uh, we can have a more academic research associated with community art or participation. Um, so I don't know if Andrea will, will link with any of these sort of um, definitions, but we were talking quite a lot about this as well. She lives in Croatia, and, and she teaches there at the Academy of Fine Arts in Zagreb. 
And we had a very long discussion yesterday about how important is where you are located. I don't know how the people that are in the room, in the room feel about that because you are maybe Scottish or English or European or coming from out of Europe but living in Scotland and sometimes the position of Scotland can facilitate or can be an obstacle for the further development of your practice. So we were discussing this and we were also discussing how important it is for our practitioners to have certain opportunities, a certain moment of visibilities in specific, let's say, moments in, of their careers. So Andrea started to be involved in different uh, big exhi exhibitions and biennials since the very beginning of her practice. I will mention just a few of their important participation. So she was included in Documenta 11 in Kassel in Manifesta 4 when it took place in Frankfurt, uh, in the Istanbul Biennial, the 8th edition, in the Liverpool Biennial, the 4th edition, in Tirana Biennial, in, in the Triennial of India in New Delhi among many others. And also she was part of lots of collective exhibitions, collective shows in museums like the Whitney Museum of American Art, Walker Art Center, um, the Palais de Tokyo, Garage Museum, between many others. Um, I thought that this would also be kind of stimulating to understand how an artist that had such an incredible and heterogeneous experience all over the world and had to deal with combining socially engaged practice and the use of the gallery, reached this point in her career in which she is kind of in a very, I don't know how to say, I used yesterday the word serene, kind of mm -hmm. quiet position in which you are at peace with yourself and, and you can really manage the presentation of your practice in a way that you are, you are satisfied by how you are working with people, but also how you are working within the institution. Um, so I thought this also like, kind of taking part of that trajectory and sharing this with all of you would be interesting. Um, so I, I'm really looking forward for, for this conversation. Um, <coughs> feel free to ask questions. Uh, the, the floor is open yes. <laughs> since yes, now. Yes, yes. <laughs> since now, yes. <laughs> so you can ask. Viviana <laughs> told everything, so you can ask the question. We will be together Thank for you. one hour, one hour mm -hmm. and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, Andrea will be mm. presenting some of her work and also showing us some videos. Um, and please help me to actually welcome Andrea. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for coming. Uh, and thank you, Viviana, for everything. It's really great to be here. It's completely different than uh, please don't take it wrong, but when I was in, um, in Liverpool, I had a completely different uh, setup for art and everything. And it's so great to be here and to have another feeling, another, um, I would say, how I like to say, liminal pos position to the art. What I think today is the most um, powerful po position, because if you are not in the center and if, I, if you, are, you are not eaten by the system, so you still have some possibility to be free uh, about what you want to do, how you want to do, when you want to do, with which money one you want to do it, uh, who are your target public, what is the methodology, who you will invite into the process of the piece, and also what is for me really, really important that if you think that it should be some political agenda beside the piece, that you have a freedom to be very political in your, in your piece. I don't say that you should be all the time like this, but in this 20 something years I'm doing socially in engaged practice from the first piece I did in 94 in Jordania in Amman. It was about, a, about one oasis uh, where the people was pumping out the water and there was a big problem around that until the last project I'm now doing in Croatia, in Zagreb. And um, I, I actually initiated a little collective we call ourselves ISTE or Equals. These are six women. Um, the only thing what we are uh, um, uh, the same are that we are women, that we are over 40, that we are living in Zagreb. But then all of us has completely different identity. And actually what we are trying to discuss and open up and talk about is this uh, collective stranger. What does it mean to be a stranger in the city you live and you think you belong and how the body of the collective stranger are, are attacked by the dominant uh, uh, people in the dominant position in the city. So all this time from the first project and this uh, last one I'm developing, uh, I was always having um, very much the same questions. So first of all, when you are entering the gallery and when you are going out from the gallery, 
it has to be with purpose, not just because you are decided that and then that you are doing that all the time. Then very important question for me, where the money is coming from for this project, who is paying for, for this project, how is it budgeted? It's very important who is the target audience, uh, how you reach the target audience, is your message is clear, is your methodology or method inside the methodology you choose is clear. Also one of the things I always try to be careful is when you, I invite the people and I create a platform for these people to work, to collaborate together, how they feel in this collaboration. Is they, do they have a freedom? Do they feel okay? Do, they, do what they do, do, they feel that they have a, a, a kind of a decision on the parts of the project that they are involved. And also, I'm always trying uh, to be uh, in this project because this project sometimes run through three or five years or sometimes it's really short, but sometimes it's a very long process. And somehow I always try that we made the decision uh, uh, horizontally so that I'm just one of the opinion. And then everybody has their opinion. We are discussing, it's always some long discussions. And then we're trying to reach some position where everybody's okay with that. If not, we are voting. And I have one, vo one vote and all the others have the vote. And how it will turn up, you will see in the process of the project what I mean. And also the question of is this kind of art can make something in the society, change something in the society, bring something into the society? And also this question of, uh, let me see what else I wanted to ask. The question of the methodology. Hmm? The question of the methodology, so which uh, other professions you invite in the project and how you uh, make a specific space for these uh, other professions that they all, all also feel that they bring into the project something they know and not, not something they don't know but you expect them to know. So this is somehow also very important for the people who join the project. And a very important thing is the, uh, the ethical questions. So if some project really deals with uh, marginalized people who are already in the margin, already has a, a lot of questions and a lot of problems in the dominant population, and then if you work with them, how you will do it and how to uh, uh, really be, uh, as uh, Vivana said, serene in that position and just um, be there to make them possible to use the art system, which we all know it's really rich and really uh, has um, incredible tools, how it can be used by them in a way how they want. And this is maybe a simple sentence, but this is really hard when you work with the, uh, with the, with the different, uh, different uh, communities in different positions. And also, uh, I will show you here, I, I think something like six projects, we will see maybe less if the time will be uh, going too fast. And then through this project, to this um, different projects, I will try to answer these questions. And if I will not succeed, please ask me and then we can discuss about all these things because I'm very open to that and I think that there is no um, answer which is, which is good for all these things, but also that we always have to, have to ask the same question and every, every, every project and in every um, participation with the other people because the things are changing, but also the context of the, of the things we are doing is changing as well. So let's try with three. Let's start with three projects. All these first three I will show you dealing with um, with foreigners uh, in uh, how how the how the the situation of the foreign workers in different contexts. It's Austria, uh, Switzerland, and Slovenia. Uh, all these workers has different problems or are foreigners, and uh, the all three problems uh, I think is because. Uh, they would like to have a cheap worker labor, but they don't want to acknowledge that these persons are people and they have to have dignity and right in their society. So Max Frisch said in the 50s, uh, this is a Swiss author, that we wanted uh, workers, but the people come. What shall we do now? And that's, I think, still a problem. And that's still a question. And of course, especially when, when you see the problem personally, like you know, when you try to see the, the person on certain situation, how they deal with that and how they can manage it. So all these uh, three projects, in a sense, are not opening the question, but somehow very clearly uh, want to address this problem of the legal status of these people and the, question, the political question behind that. And I was using in all of these projects the same methodology, but a little bit different methods. And the first one was uh, the newspaper advertisement posters and direct mail uh, items. It was made for the Festival of Region in 2005. This is Upper Austria. 
And um, what was interesting that uh, uh, Austria, these little villages uh, are connected to Czech and, and Germany. It is in the border. And the festival was actually, um, every year they are doing it, or every second year they are doing it for these little villages. So it's not a big show, it's not in the museum. It's, it has to be something in these little villages. And then I went there to, uh, and maybe just to, just to address, this is maybe one of the answers for some of the questions I asked at the beginning, that uh, some of these projects are by invitation. So uh, there is a curatorial, there's a curatorial um, concept, uh, uh, or there is some institution who do some festival, or bigger exhibition or something, and then they invite the artist to participate. And when they invite you, of course, if they invite me, that's somehow clear that, that they are inviting me to find some I would say, a gray area of their communities and, or, or, or their societies and to open up the question, to open up a dialogue, to point out something I felt it's uh, very important and something which they put under the rug, how we say. And, uh, but sometimes, of course, it's causing some problems. Like when I was in Liverpool, they didn't want me to work with the teenage pregnancy. They wanted me to do something else. So sometimes I really have problem because of the team or because of the methodology or because of the idea of what this festival had to bring to the city. And, but in that sense, one of the things which is very important, and it was also here and in some other projects, that the curator who invites you and the institution which invites you really stand by the project. So if we agree that this will be the project and this is the concept, if something on the road happens, some, I don't know, some journalists don't like it, or some politicians don't like it, or something threatened the institution or something. I really expect from the curator and the institution to back up the project, to somehow be here for me and for the people, because if you work with some people uh, who are already on the margin and you, you left them in the middle of the process, then it's even worse for them. Then they will have this feeling that even through art, they could not have the voice. And, and, and that, that, that's for me, it's really important to think about who, whose invitation I will, I will accept not because of me, but because of the people I will work. Sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I do not see enough in the future to see what will happen. But a few of these examples was really great. I was so happy and the curators really did things which was for me in that moment unbelievable that they was able to achieve. So this was, um, uh, I would say, a symbolic project. It was simple, so let's start with this one. I just made a um, um, different advertisement for a job. Uh, I asked uh, one uh, research to, uh, I asked for one research to use for this project and the research was about, it was made by the women immigrants in Linz. The research was made about how the people treat the workers uh, in their houses and how the uh, how the, the, these workers feel themselves according to the people who are uh, hiring them. So this was this kind of research, and from this research I took, took out all the sentences you will see here. So I, that's also one thing, when I, when I work with this kind of question, I don't want to uh, make up the things. So I really want the, the research to be precise, and whatever we write, whatever we say, it should be precise, it should be true. So I don't want to fake the the facts or the sentences or the problem, because I, I think that, that's, again, it's not fair toward the people who are in this situation. So this was the sentences, and what I did, I was just put an advert, like a real advert for job. I said, Austrians, uh, Austrian citizens only. And the job I offered them was the same job they're offering for the people who, who are immigrants. So the same condition, so I didn't change anything. I just changed who are the target. So the target was not the immigrants, but the Austrians itself. And let's just maybe read one. It's a, I mean, I like this, it's very symbolical because she's a Cinderella and she, she thinks that she will become a princess, but it doesn't happen. And also, I, in this moment, maybe I have to say that by coming from ex-Yugoslavia, I'm some, somehow different than to come from some rich uh, European country because I do understand because a lot of people from Yugoslavia are working in Austria, especially in Vienna and the another other part of Austria. And I somehow I have friends who work, so I somehow understand very well this position they are inside. So I'm looking from somehow from that position. And that's why, for me, it's very symbolic that they come like a Cinderella and they think they will become princess, but it never really happened. And in the meanwhile, they got very frustrated or they just got back home or something. This is all before EU. Of course, today for us it's different, but still there's a lot of other countries who have the same problem and who have the same 
uh, feelings when they come. So it's a, a cleaning lady wanted, Austrian citizen only. You are an Austrian citizen with high school or university education. You are motivated, clean, reliable, pleasant, diligent, hardworking, and quick. We offer excellent working conditions, low wages, strenu strenu uh, how you spell it? strenuous uh, working hours without a break, no health and accident insurance, no vacation or Christmas bonus, short notice termination of employment, no travel expenses to the workplace covered, no registration, no extra payment for overtime or additional work on weekends and evenings, no recognition of academic qualification as well as possible erasure or sexual discrimination. And as I said, that's true. That's, I didn't figure that out. And then there is this number. It says, call us. If you can com completely identify with the requirements of the described position, then call this number. And we put it that exactly in the places where they normally uh, put this advert. So this is the this is this uh, newspaper, and then in the certain places in these villages, and also in the mailbox. And then we were waiting what will happen. And this is one of the things in this um, in this project that, I mean, how you know it works. The only the only way you can know it works or not if there was if, if there will be some response. So if they will work, if they will call, it works. If they won't call, in a way it doesn't work. So. And then in this uh, phone, there was a social worker, of course, from, from Austria. And these was these five questions they were asking the people who called. And a lot of people called. And for us, it was really um, great. And there was all the answers I used to put out together with the documentation of the piece in the gallery when I show it. Because I think it's very important. And the people can, the public can also read the answers. The answers went from, I'm really angry because of that, because I think this is the job for these people who come, not for us, until that, yes, I have somebody in, in my family who is foreigner, and this is exactly how they treat them, and this is not okay, until are you some political party, why you are doing that? So there was a really uh, comp complex answers, and, and, uh, but a lot of people was really angry because we're offering them something in that conditions, which also says something about their thoughts about themselves and about the others who come to their countries. Um, uh, and social worker. It was a social worker from Austria who was answering the phone. Because I, I didn't want to offend the people more than if they were offended by, the, by this. And I felt that it's nice that she will know how to respond and she can speak with them in a nice, somehow way, not, not to, you know, to get in some fight on the phone. So, and we had uh, different, different things about that, but let's continue and then we can go back to some of the project if you want to ask more. This project um, um, I somehow like very much because I think here we, we, we managed to be, to reach some political um, um, questions uh, uh, very clearly. It was again by invitation. It was from Shet Halle Rote Fabrik in Zurich, Switzerland. And this is a really, really great gallery. It's run by activists and, and um, different curators since the 60s. And it's, I, I have all, I mean, it's, they do a fantastic job. And in that time, it was Katharina Schlieben and Sönke Gau, the curators. They are from Germany. They invited a lot of artists to do something on this subject of work to do, self-organization in precarious working condition. And what I chose when I arrived in 2007, uh, that was what I find in the street. So this, this was a campaign from the SVP. It's a very right-wing party. So it's 10 years before today. So we, we are witnessing in the last year that Europe become very um, right-wing. But 2007, it was quite too early for this. So this was, the, this was their um, big campaign. So the SVP was all already in the parliament, the majority, but there was the next, uh, uh, next election and they wanted to continue to be on the power. And this, is, this was the campaign. So they, these three uh, white sheep putting down from the Swiss flag the black sheep and he say, uh, we will protect you. Uh, one, there was one more poster, they had to take it down, and this was that one of the white sheep was, the, the throat was cut, she was bleeding the sheep, there was the knife in blood, and the same, we will protect you from these immigrants. That was somehow the, 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 the message. They had to remove that one, but they didn't have to remove this one. And for a lot of people it was racism. So for example, this is El Mundo, it says about racism, then the independent also was 
was uh, writing about this as, as a kind of racism that the United Nations were alarmed, but nothing, nothing helped. They, they, this, this poster stayed all around the city. And because of that, I, um, I, I, uh, I wanted to do a project with these illegalized people who should be uh, cleared out from the, uh, from the Swiss flag. Uh, I invited, first of all, the legalized people um, who wanted to join us, then um, and, uh, the activists who work with them, the, of course the gallery, myself, and then a uh, green political party. It was five of us in this, how I, want to, how I like to say, platform for the project. There was five different angles in the project. And what I um, uh, suggested, that we do a piece uh, in a way that, that we collect uh, invite the in, uh, illegalized to give us uh, money because these people are working. So these are not uh, asylum seekers or refugees. These people are working, but illegalized. So they are working in the black market and they are completely illegalized. So they don't have any dignity. They don't have any paper, but they live there like 20 or 25 or 30 years with their kids, with their family. So the kids are going to the school, but in the same time, they don't have paper. So which is really um, um, hard position for the kids as well. And I invited these people who want or uh, to give us one franc and that then we will collect the money and give us a present to the parliament. Because in that time, the parliament was renovating in Bern. And the idea was that we give the money to the parliament and they use it for renovation. For example, they paint one wall or they, they buy a table or something and they put a little uh, plate which say this is uh, a gift from the illegal, uh, illegalized people of Switzerland. And that's why we was telling that uh, one uh, franc, one voice, one franc, one political voice, in that sense. And we, and this whole campaign went under, in the country of them, of money. Money is a voice because this is a little bit cynical for the Swiss. Uh, and and um, we was very much aware that the most important thing of this campaign is the is the campaign of this, this project is the process of the campaign. That it's very important that people know about that but because. All the time, the, the illegalized people was, um, the SVP wanted to say that they are here just to use the system, that they want to rob you, that they are bad, that this and that. And what we wanted to, as a message to go out, that no, 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 they want to give you money. So they want to give you a present. They want to participate in your society, for example, through participation in the renovation of the parliament. So that was, so we wanted that they hear that. And that's why, we asked, and, and, uh, and um, the, the gallery was really great. They, they got a lot of attention and a lot of uh, donation in, in these um, advertisement spaces. For example, one of the most important ones was this, which you can see. This is the main railway station in Zurich. It's a really nice, rich uh, railway station to center in the city. And uh, the campaign was there, and we was uh, inviting the illegalized to, to give the money uh, as, as the present to the parliament. And the, the idea was that if you are from, from Zurich and you see this on, uh, on the display, you are thinking how many of them are around me, or who want to give the money, or who is paying for that, or what, what's going on. So we wanted that they feel this insecurity, that they had this question. And we were doing this for one year in different places, which was open, for, which, where the people gave us the donation. We were doing the, this campaign. And the other campaign went underground. So we had to do an underground campaign as well, because the illegal, illegalized people, you have to understand, they're really afraid. They don't come together. So because they, they think that if one will be deported, then the police can get all of them. So they're really all over the city and it's hard to get to them. And then we were trying to go to the, space, the spaces where they buy their spices or foods or they go to the internet or telephone. And in that time, you had, you, it was not that everybody had internet or, or telephone possibility. Or maybe for some, in some spaces where they have uh, legal um, help for free or may, maybe medical help for free, different uh, activists, etc., etc. So there was a, a lot of negotiation from the part of the gallery and the curators and it went uh, really great. It was really, um, they heard about the campaign. And then there was the public accounting on the website because we thought it's, it's a very important that the people know who is giving the money, why they give the money, how much money is there, what's going on, and always we went in these four languages. And then um, the third and one of the, for us, ending point was the, the donation itself. It took place uh, a year after we uh, started with the campaign. 
And of course, we knew that uh, it will be really hard and that the Green Party was helping us, but the, the parliament was not really satisfied with the, with the, uh, with the project and with, with, with us wanting to give the money in the name of the illegalized. So first they approved and then uh, we bought a big check and everything and the journalists came and everything, but then two hours before they cancelled uh, the, the donation. And now we again had to discuss what to do. I thought, doesn't matter, we will go there and okay, symbolically, they will not open the, the, uh, the parliament door, but we will leave the check, leave the plate and that's it. This is also one kind of symbolic. But then the other partners said no. Uh, they don't want, because in the Swiss society that's not the way how they, how they negotiate and how they relate to, to these kind of problems. And then I said, okay, that was one of these things when I said, okay, I, 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 if, if that's the decision, let's don't do it. And then we didn't went to, the, to, to, uh, to this um, uh, donation, to this, um, how to say, um, donation moment, it never really happened. But then it took us six months more to, to get in this emailing with the parliament that, okay, we will bring a, a big tree or we will buy something and then with the plate and they put it inside, but they didn't want it. At the end, they said, okay, give us the money. It's okay, we will receive the money. Okay, we can live with that, but we will spend the money what we want. And then the legalized people said, no, 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 this will not happen because you will maybe use it against us. So even symbolically, we don't want to give you money in that condition. If you could not at least tell us what you will do with the money. So then we decided, as it say here, that the donation money remains in the count of SPA. This is a center which really take care about the legalized people and they give the money when they need it. And if the money still will be there and it won't be so bad um, uh, political um, opinion about them, then we will try again, maybe in the future, to to give that money to the parliament. So that was, so that was the end of, the, of this project. And there is, um, um, the activists say that there's 800,000 uh, um, illegalized people in the, in um, 300,000 300, illegalized people and the government say that there is only uh, 80,000, which is a big uh, gap, but we don't know, we never know. And these are people from, mainly I was working with uh, Bolivia and from Africa, and uh, it was one of these projects where you really see that these people think that they are the other. And you really have to work with somehow to, 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 to have a discussion that they understand that the way how they treat them is just, um, just because of this geographical and historical uh, uh, past, and not because they really could not fight for their rights. So this is one of these projects where the empowerment of, of these uh, communities go through a discussion and understanding of their position and understanding of what and how the mechanism work towards them in this same society. So it, it's quite complex, but that's why it took one year really to complete the whole project. And this is one of the things with the social engaged project that then sometimes you, you can do that in one month, but most of the times you need at least one, two, three or five years really to get to the point where everybody understands what we are doing, why we are doing it, everybody's okay with that, that everybody knows and I think it's really important. So there are a lot of projects which were started but we never finished because in the middle of the way we saw that something is going wrong, that something, somebody don't understand something or somebody are not feeling well and that's okay. We don't, mm, I think that we, we don't have to go until the end if, some, if something is, is missing uh, in the process. So this is also somehow very important. But of course, to be, to, to, to have this possibility to stop something when you already started, you have to have a freedom to choose. And this is the problem with the art system. When you enter and they give you the money, they want the result, and then it's the whole mechanism, uh, how to say, uh, eating, the, eating the project, somehow is ruling over the project. And then, then th th that's always a kind of a balance you have to make in that situation. The Bosnians Out is the third project I want to show you about this completely different uh, problem. Uh, these are the Bosnians. Uh, first of all, I just want to introduce my three uh, Osman Pezic, Said Mujic, Ibrahim Ćuric. They are my co-authors in this project. And this was done by the invitation of Moderna Galeri in Ljubljana, Slovenia in 2008. They was under renovation, the museum again. And um, they, wanted, they invited 40 artists to do something on the street because the, the, the museum was under renovation, so it, it called Museum in the Street. 
And I saw these people, these Bosnians, again, Bosnia was part of Yugoslavia, Slovenia was part of Yugoslavia, so we speak the same language if we want. We don't have to, but if we want, we can understand each other very well. And I, of course, I know, I know the whole uh, background story. And I saw these Bosnian guys, uh, the construction workers, construction workers working on the museum building, and I invited three of them uh, uh, who want to join me in the museum, not on the museum, uh, like for one week to work with me on a piece for this exhibition, Museum in the Street. And we started, I started to work with them, kind of a little workshop to, to explain them all the methodologies, possibilities, what we can do, how, and I opened up completely uh, for whatever they want, the topic, the medium we can do, it just had to be on the street. And of course, um, uh, we pay them. They, they got the same money like me for this. And um, later, when we uh, sold the piece to the museum, uh, I got one fourth, and each of them got one fourth of the, pro of, the, of, the, of, the, of the money, which I think is also very important in this kind of the project. Um, so we were talking what to do and how, and they was really angry about their own situation, and, and they wanted to do something about themselves, something really visible. And then um, we chose to do again a, a city light uh, posters, and this is somehow the five poster, which was in the street. You can, you can see it in English translation. This, this sentence, Bosnia now, shut up and work, keep your kids at home, enough for you, it will do for you. That's, that's what the Slovenians uh, are telling them all the time, and it's offending them by that. And the problem they uh, really face is this. I got to work, no matter what the conditions, because my work visa is sponsored by my employer. Getting fired automatically means leaving Slovenia. I can't even look for a better job. So this puts you in a position that you could not find. If you find a better job, they will, you will lose the visa, you are going back to Bosnia, and the Slovenian government will not issue your visa again very quickly because they know that you wanted to change something. So it's kind of punishment. So you could not change your job. You are somehow under whatever circumstances your, your, your uh, company uh, figure out on a way you have to you have to be in that because you could not change your circumstances so so there is there is all these things we then used for this uh, campaign and the interesting thing when you compare the Bosnians to for example the people from Bolivia in Switzerland that the people from Bosnia was working in Slovenia before uh, the war in Yugoslavia in, in, and before EU and uh, Slovenia entered the EU so there was they had the paper and they had completely the same paper as the Slovenian in Slovenia, in Ljubljana. So the, the person is the same, but the way how he or she is treated are different. So this, this is completely different than the Bolivian who come to Switzerland, who doesn't speak the language, who really, he, who really thinks that he is not so in, in the same level like the Swiss people. So it, it was interesting to work in, in that sense to see this difference and how they relate to this problem. And also one, one decision they made, uh, which I was very afraid of, that they wanted to be on these posters, the, the workers itself. I, I recommended that we buy the, 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 the images on the internet because it's just a worker, it doesn't matter. But they wanted to be on that and I really was afraid that they will get fired, but it was okay after all. Again, we was voting, they voted against me and then I mean, I mean against my, my, my suggestion and then they was on the poster, but everything was fine until the city council took down the posters. They made a censorship. We never will know really why, but we think that there was some, some political, um, you know, some politicians was coming from Ara Arabic countries, and because Bosnians are Muslims, we think that, that, that they took out these posters really quickly because not to relate, uh, you know, this, this, how they treat the Muslim people or something like that. So, so get, they get kind of, uh, we don't know, but anyway, they, they took down this, and then the, the museum was really great. Bojana uh, Pišku and Zdenka Badovines, they fight really uh, uh, very clearly for this, and they wanted an answer. Who took it down? Why? To, why? What happened? They want back this poster. Even in the radio, they was telling where are our Bosnians from the, from the city lights. So it was the whole kind of... Which, which uh, for Bosnians, in a way, was nice. They felt that the people back up them. I don't know if it's the right word, back up. They want to help them in that, and they want to be there for them. 
And then after a couple of days, the, the, the city um, apologized. They said it was just a bureaucratic something, mistake. And they put it back, the, the posters, and the posters went through all the time, which was actually paid. I mean, it was, it was even paid, and they removed that. So I mean, it was really kind of. So this is one of these things where, where the museum really had to, uh, to fight the, the politicians for to, to get back the, 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 the work in the, uh, uh, on the street. Mm, I don't know if you want to ask maybe something about these three works, because the other, now I will show you three works I did in the psychiatric hospital. This is completely different methodology, completely deeper, different problem, and completely different community. So maybe if you want, before we enter this, if you want to ask maybe something, or... Yeah, this, the, 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 the keywords was the situation of the uh, migrant workers. So this was the keyword, and the differences between them, and the way how how um, of course the methodology all was uh, um, kind of posters and um, poster. We used also radio. We we also used uh, uh, all this um, mechanism of marketing in a different way. That was somehow the the methodology in all these three projects. And as I said, in this project, we had a clear a clear statement what we think about that. It was not opening a question, what do you think, or how we will solve that. But the, the, it was really clear statement that these people, if you want the work of these people, you should give them dignity to live in your society. That was somehow the, and, um, and, then, all, and, and then as you see, it was very different from city to city and from, from country to country. The destigmatization. Huh? Yes. Sorry. Mm -hmm. How did the, the Bosnian workers that you work with? Mm -hmm. What was their feeling when the when your project is finished? Mm -hmm. what, what was what, was what was the impact on them? And did their situation change at all, or did they become more politicized, or what was the outcome? So there them? is two. There is two different things. One is how they felt. They felt. Uh, they felt good. They felt knowledge. They, how to say? They felt noticed. They felt that their voice get uh, somehow out, and um, that's one thing. But the other thing is the question: what we can do through art? If 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 there is any way to really change the situation. But I was really clear with them from the very beginning that we could not change the situation in political sense because I think this is a political question. They have to allow them to change the work, um, the company, without losing the visa. So this is, this is a very political decision. And of course, from the po point of art or the museum, you could not change it. But you could make aware of the people what is the problem, give some voice and some power to these people. And then hopefully also the other people like activists. In that time, the activist was working with the workers as well. The activists, the journalists, the philosophers, politicians, will also think about that and do something about that. And uh, I think f from my approach, it's always going somehow from this point of one person or one, or, or one condition somehow to, to, to this human relation, that the people can uh, enter this problem to this human relation, to this one, one person, but always addressing uh, a much higher problem, that this is not a problem of this one person, but he is or she is in the problem because of the, because of the legal problem, legal status, and I could not change it. I could just make it clear, because one of the problem, and that maybe I missed to say with one uh, Frank One Voice, uh, I have a problem with the works which normalize the situation. So if you work with illegalized people that they feel better in their skin, that's also nice, but it, it, it's very dangerous because you are taking out the power of them. You are normalizing it. Okay, you don't have a dignity, but we can, I don't know, do something nice together. It's great, but it will not help tomorrow. And, and I think it, it, it it, and I really think it's in, in a way even dangerous. So um, you you have to wake up the people, not even put it put them even more uh, to sleep. So um, in that sense, I have a lot of uh, discussion about that with my uh, lot with some of my colleagues who do 
more kind of community art uh, and especially the people who come from uh, uh, North uh, Europe where the things are a little bit more settled than in, in Balkan. And I have this, I always argument this, that we have to be really open, really political, really clear. We have to face and open the question, not put uh, something under that, not just, just make it nicer for all of us to be more, uh, to feel better in our skin. Because it will not really change in any level anything. Um, this, uh, the, the psychiatric hospital is a completely different problem. And I really had a problem to to make a project there because, of course, the people who are in the psychiatric hospital, they, are, they, are, they, don't, they don't want um, anything special. They just, how they are telling, was telling me, they just want that they, they, the day that they wake, uh, uh, go normally, that they wake up, take their pills, make the bed, have a breakfast, go out, go back, have a lunch, get to end, end, end the day. So that's the only thing they want. And then, the problem in Croatia, I think in Britain it's, it's, it's much better, at least what I was reading and, and the statistics, that we have a very big stigma on, 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 on the mental health, me health problem. Uh -huh. Can I ask a question about the other projects? Yes, of course. Well, the, the, this I don't know. This, this I don't know because maybe yes, maybe no, hopefully, but this is something I never can really follow up. No, because this, this, this is artists who then do some project like that and I don't know where they see that or sh if they will do something similar or not. Or will, mm, This is something I could not really follow. What, what happened when a couple of years later I called the Bo these uh, Bosnian uh, workers um, because we sold the, the, the piece and I was sending them the money. They were really happy about that and very surprised and so I can follow the people who are, who are involved in the project, but I could not really follow after the immediate uh, uh, answer what happened, if there any other you know, answer to the, to the project. Mm. And then which part, those participants, did they do anything else? The ones you don't pay? Um, what do you mean? They do? The, 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 the people mm -hmm. in the pictures, mm -hmm. the, workers the, work the workers, did they do anything else? Were they inspired to make any work? You mean like art? Yeah. No, 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 no. They, um, they was really clear. What they wanted is that the message go out, but uh, not that they wanted to become an artist or to be involved in the art world or something like that. It's, 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 I think it's completely out of the focus of, of, uh, of these people. And this is the thing what, what maybe we, being in the art world, thinks that we are really important and interesting and everybody's looking at that, but it's not really true. We're living in our own little world. It's kind of a bubble as well as the university and, and the people are not really wanted to be related in that sense that they want to become artists or be part of the... Artists, but would they think this might be a good thing to do again to get their message across more? I mean, do you think they were going go to go... It's, it's to make a, a city light poster or something like that for them, it's really complicated. For me, it's also really complicated. So I can do that just if there are an institution who invite me and who, you know, back up the whole process. But otherwise, it's really complicated. What they can do is maybe documentary through the video or to go to some activists to work. And that was done also all this time. Some activists was working with, with the people. Uh, and, um, but that they will do any art project, I don't think that it can really happen. I think that they will uh, clear with that, that what they want is that, that the people see what's going on with them, that they don't uh, hide in, in some nice uh, um, behavior, voices, whatever, but that, that, that we can really see on this poster what are their realities. So this is what they wanted. And, and I think that, uh, I don't know if they continue to, to uh, how to say, to be activist in that sense, but this maybe would be uh, what can be an outcome when we work with, with illegalized or immigrants or and, but to, that they become an artist, this is, I, I really don't think that it, from this kind of project you know, can be possible because we, we are not teaching them how to do art really, but they are a partner in the project, in the process from their own position. So this is a little bit different than this educational pro project where I involve maybe students of art or sociology or philosophy in order to teach them, in order that they can do project together later. So this is a different approach. approach to the, to the um, people I work with.
I don't know what's the time. Maybe it's already too much. Maybe, maybe I just skip the, uh, the, uh, the. Okay, just okay. Just feel. So the uh, during these five years, I was working on the hospital. I was I was going like six months, and then I had a break, and then six months. I went every every week for to, to be in one of these uh, uh, psychotherapy um, um, session. First, uh, I was with uh, people who has uh, um, uh, mental uh, illnesses, uh, schizophrenia, and then we did together a video. And then other six months, I went to the people who had depression. It was, and then the the, the last was with all together. Uh, we were trying to find something uh, to make. Uh, more visible that the, the biggest problem we have in Croatia is actually the stigma these people and the hospital has uh, and the mental illnesses has. So the people are really almost afraid that they can catch mental illness if they have any relation with the people who has a mental illnesses. And the stigma is um, too big and even you could not understand why. It's, it's just some kind of... Um, so what I wanted is to address this stigma first of all. And after the first uh, uh, installation, after the second installation, the second installation is what, this what you can see uh, on this image. It, it say why uh, twice uh, more women get depressed than uh, men. And then there is these three answers. All of these answers comes from different people who, who work with uh, depression. And then the fourth, you can do, give your own answer because None of these answers are the, the similar. It's completely different answers. And then you enter this psychotherapic circle. You can sit on the chair, and then you see um, the camera go around, and you always see another person in front of you. And it is part of the session we was uh, doing together. It's like something like maybe 90, 19 minutes, uh, this video. And also on the wall, you can see all the sentences from these women, and there is one man. Uh, uh, how they, they understood that they are depressed and down you have the sentences they used in the hospital to get to empower themselves again and to, uh, to have this self-confidence again. And um, mm, these are uh, some of these women. Of course, they wanted to be uh, hidden the, the identity because of the stigma. And... Uh, um, the, the whole the whole video we did because we wanted to address to the people on these chairs if that they recognize on time that they had depression or somebody uh, have depression in their surrounding and then they go to the doctors on time not that late because that's the problem the stigma is so big that they come or they never come they die before they come to the hospital or they come really late and then of course the the, the whole process of healing is, is become really complicated and then mm, I was not satisfied. After these three years uh, working, I still felt that we didn't address the stigma enough. And I, I invited two designers uh, to join me. And um, beside this uh, psychotherapist who was with me all this, Dubra Kastiacic, who was with me all these five years in this project, we invited also the, the women who do uh, work, creative uh, workshops in the hospital. So there was five of us. And um, I proposed that we see with the patient to create some, um, some object which can go out from the hospital because nobody wants to say I am in the hospital or, or I have schizophrenia or, 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 or depression, but they want to address this problem somehow, but not through them. So I wanted that we figure out some object together with them and some slogan and something and, and the way how to get the message out from the hospital, because physically from the hospital, because as, as I said, the people have this feeling that if you touch the table from the hospital, you will get mental illnesses. It, it's really kind of... And then we made these um, really nice um, uh, um, pillows. Uh, these are the real pillows in the hospital. Mm, and these are these pillows uh, designed for home and then they're really making it in the hospital. And for me, it was very important that, that after we left, me and the designers, they still have this process of making the pillows. So they still make, if they want, in this creative workshop, they still can make the process. Of course, we was working completely voluntary. We didn't get any money for that, which was from the very beginning clear. And um, that, that, you know, that's also a problem with this, with this kind of work. You come, you do something, and then you leave. And I wanted that this, these people there have something, really. But they was working with us. They made this pillow with our help. And I wanted them that they have it. And then 
they have a, an NGO inside, an organization inside the hospital. So all the money, they sell the, these um, pillows and all the money go back to this organization and then they buy tickets if somebody has to go home of the patient or they buy them, I don't know, trousers or something because a lot of these people are poor because if you get schizophrenia with 17 years, 17 or 18 years, you could not work all your life. So little by little you and your family get really poor. So these are a lot of problems inside that. It's not so simple. And now it was the question how, how we go out with that, how, how the people will know about that. And we invited one PR person to do the PR with the newspaper, very clearly and very uh, sensible, because the, the, the media is the one who created the stigma. If you, if you write, okay, uh, the, the, the person with mental illnesses killed someone, of course, everybody will, will think, okay, they are killing us. But you never will say, okay, uh, creation killed someone. You will say uh, the person MA, I don't know, 39 years, killed someone. But if, there's a, if it's a Roma person or a mental illness, immediately they will put it. So these are these stigma the media is, is making. Unconscious or conscious, it doesn't matter, but these are the big, this is how it, and then that's why we was really careful how to go out to the media, but we needed the media, because the whole project was actually that you was able to uh, invite our, uh, our uh, pillow through, through this website, it say invite the pillow, and then uh, you just feel it, and we send you the pillow. The pillow is with you like uh, up to four weeks. It can be longer or, or, or it can be shorter but not longer. And then we just ask that you put, you go with this pillow everywhere you go and you put the, the photos on the Facebook. And as I said, because it's come from the hospital. When you go with the pillow around, this is already the stigmatization. And if you can see these little birds on the pillow, um, in, in Croatian this is the play with the words because Vrapče is the name of the hospital and these little birds in, in Croatian is Vrapčići. So these uh, patient, they said, okay, we are these little birds, All of, each of us is one of these birds. And also they put a slogan, I am in depression, I am here to cure myself and I keep the bed for you. So it's a little bit like, and then the whole was like a little bit like a play, how to say, a little bit like cynical, because they said, okay, the situation is terrible, but we want to have this message which is a little bit um, more colorful, a little bit more cheerful, have a little bit of humor, a little bit of cynicism, because we don't want the people to feel sorry for us, but we just want them to let us live our life and we go out from the hospital. That's all. Not even help, just don't push us back to the, to the hospital. That was somehow. And we didn't know what will happen. That's again, we put it out, out and then we were waiting. And, and it went really good. The people was, as you can see in, in the Facebook, they was going all over. They asked the, for, the, for, the, for the pillows. And, and even if we didn't know who are these people and where we send the pillows, uh, just two pillows never came back. All the other pillows were sent back, even washed, sent back. And, and we sent it to the other person. And it was really great. And the people brought that uh, many, many different places, <laughs> even in the church, yeah. in the in the many different places, in the schools, kids, universities, workplace. Um, so it was really great. So it, in that sense, the the, the people in, in the hospital was happy uh, because all the newspaper was writing uh, positively about them. And the newspaper was writing that the, 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 the people from the hospital making the pillow, so the patient making the pillow to talk about the stigma, so not the artist or the art or the, any other context. So for me, that was somehow the end of, of, of this um, work in the hospital. And somehow I felt that with this pillow, we, we managed to get out with the message and we managed to get out this, this, this problem of the stigma into the wider community. Okay, that's, that, uh, that's about the hospital. <laughs> uh, I will skip the women index. It's, we don't have enough time for that. I will just maybe show you uh, one more piece uh, about uh, creative strategies. Uh, and maybe just to, sh to say something about the part. 
uh, we did in Mexico. This was about the self-organized communities. The idea was that uh, uh, we work with these communities and that we show the people how, how they can self-organize and then that they actually learn something from the communities uh, uh, about the self-organization. Um, in the website, we don't have now enough time, but in the website, all these videos uh, you can see are there. Mm, and uh, we, we made uh, more than um, uh, 18 videos about different uh, self-organization, and we, we made it in a way that anybody can learn, and it's a kind of open source for anybody to join and to learn how to do it. We made a website which also address a lot of information and, 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 and a lot of different tools how to do, how to self-organize. And also for us, uh, uh, because in, the Me in Mexico City, uh, the, um, the museum is really, a, in, in a way, a public space uh, in Croatia. Not too many people come to the uh, contemporary museum in, in everyday level, but in Mexico City, it's a, a lot of people come in. And uh, in that sense, we wanted to use the, this space for an open discussion and as open source for everybody who wants to join in this discussion of self-organization. And that's why the most important part of, of this space we had in the, uh, in the museum was actually these tables, uh, um, because it was used uh, from us, but also from the others who wanted to join to talk about self-organization and problems they face and how to solve that. And uh, maybe just quickly to say that we were wor working with four different communities, each coming from a very poor area of Mexico City. These are the out this is Mexico City, and they are coming from the outskirts. One was uh, um, a theology of theolo theologist of liberation. They works with the uh, with the workers, uh, the the miners a lot. The rights for the miners because when the when something happened with, uh, on the mine, when the miners die. Nobody helps the family, nobody helps the kids, and, and they don't have any rights. So we was working with them, then two very poor neighborhood who, who in different ways self-organize themselves to have an, uh, uh, a much better life condition, and uh, uh, indigenous or these um, uh, uh, people who try to, res res uh, uh, to s save in a way their language and the land, and the city is coming more and more to their uh, space. So, um, and it took us two years to work with the communities because we really wanted that um, each community know the other, that they travel each to other, that, that we had a lot of meeting, that they decide about the name, the title of the, of the exhibition, what we will do, how much activities we will have, who will run which activities, that they really use the space in the museum like they, their own space. So to, to get to this point we needed like two uh, years of getting to know, know each other and getting to the terms what we really want to do and how to address all these things. And then um, what was for us the most important thing, as I said, was really these activities we had uh, in the museum during the during the, uh, the, the, the time we used the space in the museum. Every two or th second day there was something uh, and also other organization uh, was joining us. For example, this, this is not our, from our, this is, they was talking about uh, different sexual orientations, or they was talking about the people who come from Guatemala, or this is, for example, the people, the artists who joined uh, wanted to create some self-organized system for themselves. So there was more than, I think, 25 things uh, we did in the course of the exhibition. So maybe I will stop here because um, it's, it's too late. I will just show you one, um, I will just show you one part, one part of one movie. Uh, we did uh, about the workers in Croatia. And uh, this is a uh, movie which also, because we did the same piece, the same problem we tackled in Croatia, but in a completely different way. In Croatia, I was invited by a really small gallery, Gallery Nova, to do a piece. And the, the whole idea went differently. So we did something together, like a toolkit, which then from the gallery was traveling around uh, uh, to different schools, uh, libraries, different places like a toolkit for self-organization because we were, were not able to expect that the people will come in the small gallery, so we wanted to do other way around. So we were doing something which was then whole year 
was struggling. And one of the problems we, 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 we tried to address was the workers' rights, because there was different problems, environment, workers' rights, uh, uh, union, feminism, um, uh, engaged art, uh, contextual theology, direct democracy, so all these different part, uh, things we were, were addressing because we thought that everything had to be included in the toolkit, especially for the, the, the young people like uh, in, the, in, the, in the secondary school, they learn about that because all the time you can, you can hear discussion about these notions, but I think we thought that the kids in the school doesn't really know what does it, what does it mean, direct democracy or workers' rights or union. Or, so we went to the schools and doing these uh, workshops with them and we was leaving them uh, printed materials about this notion. We made a big, big website where they can come back to, to in a way, uh, learn about that. That was approached for the secondary school uh, um, pupils, but this was, uh, I will just show you one of these. There is six, this is short, like five minutes. This is uh, six stories about six different um, workers who was fighting for their rights. And the name of, of the movie is what, what has our struggle given to me? Because in time of the socialism, there was a big slogan, what has our struggle given to us? And we wanted to change it and to see what one worker can gain from, the, from, from struggling and for fighting for their own uh, workplace. And this, is, this story ended good, so I will show you this as a kind of positive ending. And then if you have some questions, we can talk about that. Ja sam Pavel Zimbalga, sindikalni provednik i predsjednik Radničkog vijeća u firmi Ista Slovomajska BD. Nalazimo se u Ivancu, što je u Varenskoj Županiji, u tvornici alatnih strojeva koja više od 50 godina se bavi tom djelatnošću. Danas je mjesto 40 uvijeljeli, ako je radnika, ako pomnožimo sa 3 ili 4, onda dobijemo koliko je bitno svakodavno mjesto, a to se neko htjelo uništiti. Najveći problem su nastali u 2001. godine kada je firma opišla u privatne ruke, koji su bila nekretnine i zemljište na zemljenom mjestu. To se i u konačnici pokazalo da je bilo bitno doći do nekretnina. Okidač je bio da smo vidjeli sve ono što smo sve ove godine kao stvarili, u jednom trenutku se počelo rušiti, ali doslovno se rušiti sa bagerima, ne samo da se odrušava kao sistem, nek' jednostavno patiriš da privatnik dolazi sa bagerima i rušiti tvornicu u kojoj ti radiš, kako šta može čovjek nakon toga zaključiti da ne ti neće imati više gdje radi. Sve okolnosti koje su u ovom trenutku bilo da su protiv nas, protiv radnika, privatni vlasnik, partneri odkazali poslovanje, nema plaće, radiš jednostavno. Kad vidiš još da ti je ruše ono što je ostalo, onda je prekitalo svima. Odba je počela, ja bih rekao, još 2003. kad nismo mogli postići sa višim vlasnicima projektni ugovor, pa je tu počeo prvi štrajk pozorenja. I tu smo mi došli do sukoba i to je bio njima dovoljno znak da oni mogu krenuti u prodaju nekretnina i strojevača u firme koje su osnovali u svojem vlasništvu, u svojem manažmanu, ali vi niste mogli preko nikakve institucije doći do istine koliko se zaradilo, koliko se ukralo, koliko mi možemo dobiti plaću, to da nismo mogli. Osnovno, ako se neko želi boljeti radnici, budu vlasnici, osnovno je prvo zajedništvo, drugo, ne napustiti tvornicu i ostati u njoj do kakve moguće. Jer ja ne sam samo luđak, može doći kao vojska ili recimo i policija i da tjera radnike koji žele raditi da tjere tvornicu na bit svega bio se čuti strojeve koji su bili u pogonima i ne dozvoliti bilo ko da i jedan stroj se odšarafi i da se izveze na ovom. To je bio jedan i drugi dio je bio gdje skladište potrebnih proizvoda dijelova koje je bilo uvijek uključen, da nije bilo moguće čak ni stečenom upraviti, da nije bilo dozvoljeno, da dođe do toga jer to je bilo jedno moguće moći. Dakle, steče smo ga četiri sa 207 radnika, tih 207 se dakle borilo konstantno do okončanja steče, evo ja bih to rekao, to je bio prvi prvi dve iz sedme kad smo osnovili današnju firmu koja je danas ovdje jesu.
Mogu da je to radničko samopravo? Da. Mogu da zvati i ja mogu reći da je radničko samopravo, da radnik upravlja sa onim za što se je izvorio. To je radničko upravljanje, jer ono što smo imali ljučni sistem u nije. Što je tam radnik nije morao smijeniti direktora, a nas, koji da su radnici, mogu mijenjati direktora i to smo učinili prije dvije godine. To je moja poruka svima. Ako postoji i jedan postup mogućnosti, da postupno vlastiti, nek zgrava. Ja posebno sam zadovoljan i sretan da otvaramo sa svojim postupima nova radna mjesta. Vjerujem da će ga biti još i da ćemo biti prepoznatljivi da smo jedan od malog broja firmi u Hrvatskoj gdje radnice učuje svoje sudnje. Are you stopped there? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm prepared for your question. Touch post. I have a question mm -hmm. about, um, I think it was called credit practices. Mm -hmm. um, because you were um, trying to, to invite in these different groups mm -hmm. in the space of the museum. Mm -hmm. And as you know, currently we have an exhibition just downstairs mm -hmm. uh, titled The House That Heals the Soul, mm -hmm. where we are trying to invite people in uh -huh. and to interact with books and to read and to mm -hmm. attend workshops. Um, and I always question things like, why, why do they need to come to the mm -hmm. gallery space? Mm -hmm. What is the reason? And there are multiple reasons, of but course. I would like to know in your case, why it was so relevant for, mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. to bring together communities that were in different parts of the city mm -hmm. and bringing them to this place, which mm -hmm. maybe for some of them was not mm -hmm. the most comfortable mm -hmm. room or the most comfortable mm -hmm. environment, but it was probably still a valid platform where to meet. So mm -hmm. I'd like to know mm -hmm. the reasons. We started differently. So how, how we started was, um, I think I have here um, the whole time from the very beginning, we started with some uh, workshops together, invited these uh, communities because these communities. So Mexico City has this this part which somehow count as the city, and then this outskirt is very poor. And for example, the driver from the museum when we went to this uh, area to make a research, he was really angry with us because he thought they would rob us, kill us, whatever, and he. He drive them, but he was really angry that he had to go there, and he never went there. So, uh, one and I wanted to work with this outskirt of, of the city because we were traveling in in Latin America before for one year with uh, through different countries and knowing different people and different self organization, and I was really uh, caught how good is that and how strong is that and how brave are they in that, and I really felt that uh, we all have to learn from this. And we all have to acknowledge them in a way that, that they are maybe illiteral, they are very poor, but the way how they deal and how they fight for the dignity of themselves and the children are really brave. And we really have to, and I wanted to know how it comes, how, how, why they have it, we don't have it. We also are an ex-socialist country. How they know how to do that, why we don't know how to do that, and how we can learn from them. So that was my, and that's why I did a, a quite a big research also, because there is this three things that, the direct democracy, intelligent liberation, and the social movements, which somehow was the base for this research. And also in the other part of the space, there was this three video explaining to the students and the young people who wanted this, what is what, and what is the base for what they see in the other, other world. And then um, uh, I, I wanted to work with this uh, indigenous and theologists and very few poor communities, and they was in the outskirts of Mexico City. So th in the beginning, when I arrived to Mexico first, I asked for an assistant who is anthropology, anthropologist, but also has some knowledge in art system and art production to find out exactly who to address, who to call of these communities. Of course, it wasn't that easy. We called a couple of them, we went to the meetings, and then we found out these four communities. One which is really new, one which is old, and, uh, and one theology of liberation, and one indigenous. And then I started to work with them. And the beginning, I, I, I said the same thing. I don't want to go to the museum, because this is too posh, too fancy, and they won't feel good there. 
let's do something in the city center, because the city center is, in a way, used by all the people of the city, not just the very, the, 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 the people who can afford to use it. And, and little by little, by, by sitting in the museum and watching who's coming in and watching all the people who are coming and how, 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 much, how, how, how many people come in and how different are the people who come in this in that museum. That museum is on the university right, on the university side, so a lot of students coming in. We somehow decided that, okay, we will do that in the museum. Somehow we decided that this can be an interesting, interesting public, an interesting public, and, and somehow to target them with all this question and all these tools we were de developing during these two years, so in that sense. But for me, it was really important that they see these communities, um, that they can, can see. That's why this uh, wall you can see uh, uh, on, uh, <laughs> where it is here? This, this wall you can see is, uh, so you know that which part of the city is this, they don't go there, and then you can see this little map of each of the part, and these videos was taken in these uh, places of this uh, um, part of the city, and you can see behind them how it looked like, what they've done, um, and there's all sorts of things. As I said, we don't have no time, but everything is here, uh, and you can see very, very different things, like community kitchen, library, everything they made myself, fighting for workers' life, uh, uh, rights, ecologi uh, ecological, um, area they made, um, the Miravaya neighborhood is really great, they made a lot of things for themselves. For example, they were building the houses for themselves and then they left an uh, empty space in the middle. If they will have money, they will make a square, because without a square you could not have a community. You had to have a space to come and talk. So there was really, it was really, it, it, the whole process for me was really interesting. And then they are really poor, but they still have a community kitchen for even poorer people to come and, and to eat. And then, I mean, all these all these things. But it took it will take me one hour more to explain, so I won't go too deep. But you can see all of this here, and and it was it was somehow very important that, that the people get the message. And when you stay on that wall and you see all these videos going on, all the people talking about, and the question was always, how do you self open up yourself? How you carry this? through 20 or 30 years, how you deal with the problems. So it was really a tool for everyone to understand and to, be, to participate. And then um, the most important thing was that, that these communities really felt this space as their own, and they, they hosted. They were inviting other communities. And for example, one really nice thing was when the Guatemalan community came to talk about their problems because they're going on the train from Guatemala to Mexico, and a lot of young people just disappear during this trip, and it's a very big problem, and a lot of disappearance, and that, so they were they was addressing that and having connection with the other organizations, so it really created a hub, and that was important. But I think it's really specific, because as I said, Mexico City has this little bit American model of museum, so it, it, it's, it's completely, it's, it's functioning completely differently than the museums, in, in, at least in Croatia. So in that sense, we, we, it was, was not hard to bring the people, because the people was anyhow coming in. But it was just, we had to find a way how to make them to be in our space, and how to make them to be involved, and to understand where they can be involved in the, and of course to have open source for everything. And we have also a very good website we built, so the people, when they want to interact with us, they can also, use, I don't know, uh, uh, different tools for that. But I now don't want to take more time, but there was like, you know, a lot of different uh, tools for them, and also a map of different associations. And then we, do, we did the same uh, in Croatia, because we realized that we have a very, very big problem with, with this kind of stuff in Croatia as well. So we, we did the same website, and I think that it's very good that we have some kind of outcome after you uh, run the exhibition, something which is which you can uh, put on the web, which is a live open source, something you print, which is helpful. We, we made, we printed out, for example, all the notions for the kids, even if the notions is here, of course, in Croatia now, but so they can use that. So um, I mean, these are specific things for specific uh, specific projects. 
but um, but I think that this is, a, for example, what is engaged art, or what is democracy, or what is direct action, or what is uh, uh, um, um, economy. Um, now, I mean, uh, all these things. Uh, uh, I I think it's very important when you when you don't do it superficial, but you go as deep as you can and you make something clear and useful for for the others. Depending on who is your target public, of course. Is it accessible in English? Um, the website is not accessible in English because uh, we were never invited in any English-speaking uh, country. But we do have a kind of uh, installation uh, about the workers' rights and about some of the notions, about some of the things as kind of documentation of the of part of the piece in English. I have another question. Mm -hmm. Because Viviana mentioned uh, the importance of research when it comes mm -hmm. to social engagement projects. And we have seen that you operated in, in many contexts which, are, which necessarily you are not familiar with. Because like, like unlike Zagreb, which you, which you, where you come from, you work in Liverpool mm -hmm. and you mentioned that the EU wanted to do a specific thing about mm -hmm. like, teenage pregnancy. So I want to ask about your like uh, research methodologies. Mm -hmm. like how, how do you... How do you what do you look at, and mm -hmm. how do you how do you unpack uh, topics to, to, to mm -hmm. tackle with your art practice? Um, I, I would say that each project has a different approach. Uh, if I talk about migrant workers who come from ex Yugoslavia or something like that, then it's somehow easy because I have my own network in the same situation. Mexico was again easy because we were traveling one year through, and I was really caught up, and it was clear what I want to do. In Liverpool, the, 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 that story was really sad, and I don't uh, really like to talk about that. But uh, they they gave me a specific subject I need to do, and then I went there to see what it is about, and I really felt that it's not a problem that I don't want to address it because this is just um, it's not right. It's not. I don't think that the art should should talk about that, and in that way. But at the same time, I really noticed that there's a lot of teenage pregnant girls all around me. It was really just kind of, I, I, we just noticed that. And then we went to research on that and we find out that in 2008, Britain was the high, had the highest rate in, in teenage pregnancy in Europe. Which was, of course, very, for us, very, very... Um, surprising and then uh, but then all the door keep keep start shut uh, they didn't allow me to do that and they were shutting all the doors to researchers to the teenage pregnant to the I mean I really had a lot of problems so at the end I was doing the research with the uh, with some uh, uh, psychologist in Zara who's dealing with teenage pregnancy and who knows the, the Britain situation because they went to some uh, uh, congresses and they were doing some research so I went uh, another way around to do the research and really see is it true and why and what's going on, etc. etc. So, um, in Switzerland, as you, as you saw when I arrived, I saw these posters and it was also very shocking for me. Still, I was talking with different people, like different groups, like the prostitutes coming from East Europe, then like the people come, come, the prostitutes who are Swiss but uh, are under drugs, then so I, I still went to different interviews with different people to talk, but at the end I came back to this problem of illegalized because I thought that this is really not okay. That they really, I think, feel bad seeing these posters, and it's nice that somebody worked with them and addressed it in a completely different. So it's 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 it. I don't have one methodology, and also when I build up the project, it's not always the same. It's always different dependingly of the target audience and the method. Uh, we will work on for this target audience. So it's 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 somehow, and the context is always different. As I said, the museum in Mexico is not the same as the museum in Zagreb or in Austria. And if you, if they invite you to do something on the street already, then you don't have to think about the gallery. Then you already have this this you know option to, and also the budgeting. I think it's really important in this situation. We are running an NGO, a non-profit. You would say a non-profit organization since 2001 for art, science and technology and there is 8 to 10 of us from different professions and we do different projects through this platform and this is also give us 
for each of us who do some project with this platform, it gives us some freedom to, to, to fundraise for ourselves and to do what we think, with whom we want, not, not depending for, for, for some, I don't know, money from Brussels, which tell you, at least in Croatia, exactly with whom you want to have to do, which is the team, how much money you can spend, when it has to be, I mean, everything. And then, and then at the end, end of the story, nobody really thinks about uh, the, how good is the piece. But they just see the budget. Did you really spend the money? What you said you would spend, and this is exhausted. You know, it's, it's. And then, if if somebody in in Brussels thinks that this is a team for us, then I guess it was a team five years ago. So we are already too late in this kind of social engaged practices. So a lot of problems. Um, and the other hand, I don't want to use the the commercial uh, um, art market because again, if you do something for selling then you could not do this kind of thing because it's really, it's really sensitive, really touchy. You could not sell it in, in, in that sense. You could not make it for sellable. So I don't want to enter this. So again, where, where to find the money and how to, how to... But this is always changed. Every five years, some other uh, way opens for this kind of project. And I think this dynamic is maybe good. <laughs> So the mm -hmm. posters and the, mm -hmm. and the files. Mm -hmm. The only. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she, by, by um, the fact that they appear to be kind of critical of the, the status quo and the, and the state mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. how do you, as an artist, how do you access these sites, especially things like art, to, to make the work in a, in a, in a train station. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that seems to be... Because the work, the work seems to be critical of the state, mm -hmm. but it's using a, an object or a, mm -hmm. a space of the state to... It's, 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 it's really depends on the state itself. <laughs> um, some, uh, in, in, for example, in uh, Duna Uyvaros, it's a little city in Hungary, the, the, the city council called one day before the exhibition and they said, if my piece will go day, we shut down the gallery. So that was straightforward. So what piece was that? Uh, I didn't show that, it was uh, another piece. I just want to say that I had, like in Liverpool, they didn't allow me to do the finish pregnancy on the, on the, on the, on the, uh, if they know, the if they understand. So the closed it down on that. No, it was it was it was the auto censorship of, of, of the Tate Liverpool and the Liverpool Biennial itself. So it never gets to the to the point of to have a problem with the with the politicians. So there is a different censorship. You know, it can sometimes it can alter, uh, auto censorship for the institution itself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the people who, who give you the the, the display it's not a council, it's not a city, it's some company who runs and maybe they also feel that this, this is not okay how the people are treated and they want to do that and they won't have any bad uh, because they are not uh, owned by the, the state. So they, there's always different layers. In, in Ljubljana, they reacted when it came out, but when we paid for that, nobody knew what would be okay, it's an art piece, who cares? But then when it was on the street, they immediately removed that. In a couple of hours, it was removed. So uh, the censorship functioned in very different uh, ways, actually. But I think that's good. I mean, this is part of the part of the process uh, that you 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 get in this dialogue, and then you s you, you you try to see how far it can go. I mean, and I never I never I, I don't I never try to do the piece on that. That okay, that was censored, or this happened, or that happened. That's just an outcome. And sometimes we are already aware that the outcome will be zero, that we will have a negative outcome, the department will not take the money. We are already counting with that. And that they, that they get in the discussion with us, that was a big plus. You know, so somehow that's part of the, that's part of the, uh, of the process. And we are not looking to the end result, really. The end result is, again, something which build up depending on the process, not really that we we go there and that happen. happen. It doesn't happen. Something will happen. Mm -hmm. And then, and then it's it's from 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 project to project, from team to team, from topic to topic. So do you find that your 
invited as an artist to make a work and it's up to whatever the community decides that, that that work is going to be or more that you're invited to make a piece of work around a like who identifies the theme like so for the gallery uh, in Switzerland did they identify that this is a theme that they wanted to work on and they invited you in to do that or they invited you in to do that and then yeah, what they what they uh, what they wanted is the the uh, so they were doing this big uh, exhibition in Sicily, in particular, that was a curat curat curatorial uh, concept uh, of of these two really great creators, Katarina Schlieb and Senke Gaud, like a very to do self organization in precarious working condition, and they invited the artists, and then then they had already some sum for, for each of us to do the, the piece with different communities and they opened up that we can work with whoever we want and then I went to research with whom and how and what and then it's it's somehow then like you, you first to come to some kind of preview visit maybe for a week or ten days to see you know to talk with the people to see what we want to do then uh, you you send some proposals you think, and then you come back to the research, then it's longer, maybe a month or something, and then you invite the different organizations or different communities, if they want to join to this initial idea. So I give the idea, okay, I want to give something to the parliament, I want to make a present to the parliament from the part of these people who they want to take, to put out from the flag. So it was somehow my initial idea, but then I was, you know, trying to hear what the people think, how they feel about that, will it work for them? As I said, sometimes I have some idea which not, doesn't work, and then I just you know, drop it. But then you see, okay, they, they thought it's interesting, these people. I had a lot of uh, discussion with the, the activists about this project. They didn't like it, for example. The legal, the legal I liked it, but the activists didn't. One bigger, big, bigger part of the activists. They wanted that we collect the money, and then we buy, uh, uh, we buy um, tomatoes, or we buy eggs, and when they remove the scaffold from the parliament, we, we put, you know, we drop all these eggs and tomatoes and, and things on the parliament. But I was really angry because I thought that this will even make these people situation worse. You know, if you, if you ruin the new parliament in the name of the legalized, what did you do? You just did the same. Then the SVP will, you know, save you from them. I mean, so for example, that was, and then I was really under question, like, okay, if they don't agree, what's going on, why, and then we were talking through that, and then some activist was really for that, and then they joined. So in this, in this, in how to say, on the process, these are a lot of negotiation. But for me, it's very important that I don't have this position to say, okay, this will be like this and no other way, because then I think it's, it's not, it will not function. And also because uh, I don't see everything, I just see one angle, or maybe two angles. But these other people who come in, they see other angles. And then they, they, they make the bridges to, to these other communities, other people, other professions. But they will not do that if you don't include them from the beginning to the end. You could not include the people just for one thing and use the big person. It's not how it works. You have to give these people persons the possibility to choose on all the details then how, when, why, okay, this problem came out, what did you do? You could not say, okay, you finished, I'm now taking the project. Um, at least this is how I work, but maybe it's not, I mean, you don't have to be generalized. Uh, it's about all the documentation. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you participate in an exhibition, mm -hmm. there's always new projects, or you also show old projects as a documentation. Uh, I, I like to make new projects, but I'm not able to make a lot of them because I go too deeply, go through too deeply in them, and then some run through five years, and then I could not run five projects through five years. I run maybe one or two, and then I could not accept some invitations because it's just unpo it, it's again unfair. I, I then say to the curators, I really, I mean, I just I I would like, but in this moment, I think it's unfair. If I work in the hospital, I could not work. I don't know with, I don't know, something completely different. Because it's just me, and it's going through me all the time, and I have to have the, 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 the focus on, on the, this, this community I'm working with. So then, or I, or they take some, uh, some uh, documentation of some other piece, or they invite me some other time. 
and also it depends on the money. So these projects are really expensive. Maybe it doesn't look like, but unfortunately, it's, 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 it, it's, it requires a lot of money. Sometimes they really we have a great donation and they want to donate this and that and that and that, but sometimes, and also I don't want that everybody volunteering all the time. So we really try to be clear what we can pay, who we can pay, how much, and it had to be done before you start the pr project. So it's like the movie, you could not shoot the movie, before, if you don't have you know, not the money for the for the for everybody who will take part in the movie, of course, the people still volunteer and the people still want to be there, and, and it's it's great. But it's not that we take it granted that okay, great, it's it's some idea and everybody will work. So if there is some invitation and they don't have a production budget, then it's clear that they could not expect to do this as well. So sometimes the exhibition, the exhibition function that way, that they just have a production budget for the exhibition, but not a production budget for the new pieces. Because it's really, sometimes they, the most of the times lately, I guess this is because of the really lack of funding and all, everybody's struggling. Uh, I, I encounter two problems. One problem is that the, the, the invitations are too short because they really don't know. I mean, the institutions are completely also uh, completely under this uh, problem of budgeting and they don't know, they, they get the money five months before the exhibition. I mean, what can you do? You can do a nice presentation of something, but you could not do a new project in, in five months. This is one problem. And the second problem is that they, they have a great concept, but they have money just for one or two new pieces and then they invite five or six old pieces from other uh, person and then they try to switch it. And the one to switch it up to squeeze it in the same context. And then you can feel that this doesn't really function. It's great if they can invite 40 artists in project. That's great. And have two years and then we all happily work no? on our project. And then they the, the curate in the, in the way can hear all of us, combine the things, have a connection in the installation uh, among the pieces, and then it's organic. And then it's really great. Mm, but we have a lot of problems there really because of with this kind of project because of this. So a lot of the funding works really backwards and say they want a they want projects and an outcome. And they want a project uh, they want an outcome yeah. for the proposal. Yeah. But you don't know what the outcome is that I have to say that that's after yeah. twenty years they get give me yeah. a blank card. They say, Okay, you know, yeah. you do what you want. This is in the beginning that was a little bit tough. Because yes, I don't know the outcome, and they want to, to say what it will be on the wall, and I don't have any idea what it will be. That's so far away from the invitation itself. So, uh, but now it's okay. Now they know that I will deliver something, and they give me this blank card for the, you know, this is the space, and then you will see. And sometimes I just say I don't even want the space. I really do everything outside, or billboard, or newspaper, or radio, or TV, or something, and that's also fine. So. In that, in that sense, it's, it's now like, okay. Anyone else? Do you have a question? Uh -huh. um, uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm working on a new piece. Maybe I can show you. But you have to be very critical and tell me what you think. <laughs> it's very, really, 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 really short. This is this. Uh, so it's two minutes. One minute. Can you reveal also is identity the voiceover? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> yes, yes, my my partner and collaborator in a lot of our pro <laughs> a lot of projects, and also we run this uh, with other people this platform this NGO I was talking about. So th this is this uh, piece. Uh, um, I started with about this collective stranger with the, the this uh, women with the, the very different identities. As I said, only, only what we share is that we are women from Zagreb and over 40, but they are, we are very different in et etic, uh, uh, ethnical, racial, um, uh, sexual identity and, and um, uh, religion. And um, the, 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 the question I asked is this question of collective stranger. And for us, it's, for you, it's different. But for us, we are all white, all Catholic. <laughs> And for us, it's, it's really a question what to do with the person who are not white and not Catholic. And the people in general still has a problem. It's still somehow, it's good if you're tourist, of course, doesn't matter. But if you want to live there, then starts the problem. And then for me, it's a very interesting question how they relate to different body of the stranger. Who is the stranger and how, how they relate to the body of these women. So this is, this, this is something we were 
uh, talking a lot. And the first thing we did is this, what you will see. It's an, 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 first it was a video, but then we made it to animation because they want to be hidden, the identities. Not because of themselves, but because of their daughters and sons. So they don't want to, you know, they already have problems in the society because they are um, different color or they are different religion or they are covered or they are I don't know, lesbian or this or that and they don't want that, you know, to worsen the situation for their family. So the family knows about this and everything, but they decided that they want to be. So I will just show you, but we didn't came out, out with that yet. Um, <laughs> So can, I hope it will work. Bila bi zadovoljna kada bi se mogla slobodno kretati za njih ili noć. Bila bi zadovoljna kada ne bi osjećala nelako zbog ovog toku se ili trava i kada na sve. Bila bi zadovoljna da ne moram naučiti svoje djeta kako se e, nauči izvlačiti iz svih problematičnih situacija. Bila bi zadovoljna da ne moram razmišljati kud se idemo na večer. Bila bi sretna da Ne moramo različiti u kojim dijel rada da se nalazimo i zbog straha od nesigurnosti i agresije. Bilo bi zadovoljno kad bi dobila se stabilnost u svoj život, kad bi mogla sebi i djeci riješiti stavni vodom u Hrvatskoj, da se moje djeca misli da se govori naš jezik u cestu, u tramvaj, da se vjeni o sebi i djeci Voljela bih imati mogućnosti kao i sve druge žene. Voljela bih da moja djeca isto imaju mogućnost u osobitu školu kao i sva druga djeca i da me ljudi doživljavaju kao i sva druga čovjeka, a ne samo kao da. So now that's all <laughs> we have. And we have a series of posters, but this is also, we are not sure how we build. So again, this is about their bodies, and these are real women's and real problems. And then, um, and then uh, our community, our society is very different than yours here. You are, you are, you know, for you it may be uh, some situations are normal, for, but for us, the people still have to learn. How to, how to accept the differences, and then we want to uh, address this problem. Okay, now you don't have the translation, but I just wanted to show you. This is the, uh, very similar to what they were saying in the, in the video. So she is a Roma person, she is coming from Syria, and unfortunately she that didn't get the asylum uh, for her and for two kids. And then uh, she's a, a lesbian, and uh, she's a Muslim person uh, coming from... Uh, Africa, and that's that's that that's again we are trying to you know work around this issue of, of acceptance. Uh huh. Mm, no, no, somehow they had a lot of red on themselves, and then the designer decided that that, and this is visible on the posters as well. So, but this this is something we are working on. So I don't know. You can, if you have some uh, idea how we can make it better or different. It will it will not run under my name. It will run under Iste, like equals, which for me is also very important that we share the authorship and and all the uh, things what's going on about this because I think for me that that in this uh, particular situation very important. And because they want to be anonymous, so then I could not give their names, and I don't want to take all the uh, how to say credit for this. But I really want to, to equally share the participation and the responsibility and the voice of this. But that, that I don't know if you have some idea. It seems like there's an interesting tension between the anonymity and the peace, mm -hmm. and the total lack of anonymity mm -hmm. in the society, which is the root of the 
problems yes. that they're experiencing. The aggression. Yeah, that's true. That's true, yes. Yeah. Because these are real real bodies, real person. It's not symbolic. Uh, and if you were in hijab on the tram, mm -hmm. everyone sees you. Yeah. But if you're in the poster and they can only see the back of your head or something, you think, oh, it's a, a woman in hijab. Yeah. Anonymous woman in hijab, which doesn't really happen in their day-to-day -day life. But all these women are anonymous for them, and they still hate them, and they still, you know, have this feeling of of, of re re reaction towards them. Mm -hmm. And the reaction towards the body of these people are really different. So the lesbian, she got hit five times so far. The, the Roma person would be like, just go away, like, we don't want you near. And then for, for the Muslim would be, <laughs> why are you covered? You know, it's, it's very different. So we were talking a lot about that why it's different and how it's different and what we can do about these differences and why something is aggression like they want to hit but why it's just like I don't want to even be in the same uh, space with you and how it affects the children of these. So the next will be that we would like to do with the girls that we want to invite them also to include them in the workshops to see how they, these are these girls are between 15 and 18 years old the, 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 the daughters of these women, some of them, not everybody, but some of them, and then we want to include them to see how in their generation uh, this function and how we can address it. their generation maybe through some um, theater play in the schools or maybe through, through some different, again, methods, we will see. But th this is one of these things which is really a problem uh, now in Croatian society, especially with all the immigrants. You, you know that there was this Balkan route the last, uh, last summer and some people were really welcoming the people if they go through, but if you really want to stay, then the problem become, began, began, begin, you know, and then... So, but I, I, as I said, this is really a lot of layers. But I guess for you it's, it's, it's a little bit strange because all of these things here are already normalized. I mean, normal, normalized. Not normal, as much as you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I hope it was not too boring. <laughs> I just would like to uh, say a few thank you and also um, share with you some information about the rest of the week. Uh, so first of all, thank you to Chris McInnes, which is actually recording this event and was taking care of the live streaming. Thanks all of you for coming and all the people that could follow us uh, on the internet. Uh, thank you to Alex Misik, which is our new program coordinator. He was taking care of the visits around the city with Andrea and Ivo. Uh, and then I would like to invite you, if you haven't done it already, to visit the exhibition downstairs. But also for during the weekend, Intentions in Action goes on. And this time we are hosting a long event. It will last for three days called Edge Effects. Um, you can get one of these brochures on the tables just there. Uh, there is like really a variety of different, different sort of events uh, going from workshops to screenings or sauna. Uh, they are... Um, almost most of them free of charge. Uh, so feel free to just book a space at our box office. Uh, not all of them are taking place at the CCA, so try to navigate uh, the event. But um, if you are not familiar with that, Edge Effect is the final research of a uh, long uh, program, which was a cooperation, a European cooperation, that the Scottish Culture Workshop hosted since, I think, four years ago, called Frontiers in Retreat. So it's a program about use of a residency format uh, around the world, and also this idea of connection with the locale and how artists are working with the context. Um, in this case, there are a series of different topics that are going to be analyzed, like climate change, uh, sustainable practices. So if you're interested in this, just grab a copy over there and feel free to join us for the weekend. Thank you so much for coming.